Act One, Scene One, Venice, a street. Enter Rodrigo and Iago. Tush, never tell me. I take it much unkindly that thou, Iago, who hast had my purse as if the strings were thine, shouldst know of this. Splod, but you will not hear me. If ever I did dream of such a matter, abhor me. Thou toldest me thou didst hold him in thy hate. Despise me if I do not. Three great ones of the city in personal suit to make me his lieutenant off-capped to him. And by the faith of man, I know my price, I am worth no worse a place. But he, as loving his own pride and purposes, evades them with a bombast circumstance horribly stuffed with epithets of war, and in conclusion non-suits my mediators, for, Certes, says he, I have already chose my officer. And what was he? Forsooth, a great arithmetician, one Michael Cassio, a Florentine, a fellow almost damned in a fair wife that never set a squadron in the field, nor the division of a battle knows more than a spinster, unless the bookish theoric, wherein the toga consuls can propose as masterly as he. Mere prattle without practice is all his soldiership. But he, sir, had the election. And I? of whom his eyes had seen the proof at Rhodes, at Cyprus, and on other grounds, Christian and heathen, must be belayed and calmed by debitor and creditor, this countercaster. He in good time must his lieutenant be, and I, God bless the mark, his moorship's ancient. By heaven, I rather would have been his hangman. Why, there's no remedy. Tis the curse of service. Preferment goes by letter and affection, and not by the old gradation where each second stood heir to the first. Now, sir, be judge yourself whether I, in any just term, am a fine to love the more. I would not follow him then. Oh, sir, content you. I follow him to serve my turn upon him. We cannot all be masters, nor all masters cannot be truly followed. You shall mark many a duteous and knee-crooking knave that, doting on his own obsequious bondage, wears out his time, much like his master's ass, for naught but provender. And when he's old, cashiered. Whip me such honest knaves. Others there are who, trimmed in forms and visages of duty, keep yet their hearts attending on themselves, and throwing but shows of service on their lords do well thrive by them and when they have lined their coats do themselves homage these fellows have some soul and such a one do i profess myself for sir it is as sure as you are roderigo were i the more i would not be iago in following him i follow but myself Heaven is my judge, not I for love and duty, but seeming so for my peculiar end. For when my outward action doth demonstrate the native act and figure of my heart, in compliment extern, tis not long after but I will wear my heart upon my sleeve for daws to peck at. I am not what I am. What a full fortune does the thick lip so? If he can carry it thus. Call up her father. Rouse him. Make after him. Poison his delight. Proclaim him in the streets. Incense her kinsman. And though he in a fertile climate dwell, Plague him with flies. Though that his joy be joy, Yet throw such changes of vexation on't, As it may lose some color. Here is her father's house. I'll call aloud do with like timorous accent and dire yell as when by night in negligence the fire is spied in populous cities what ho brabantio signor brabantio ho awake what ho brabantio thieves 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 look to your house your daughter and your bags thieves thieves brabantio appears above at a window what is the reason of this terrible summons? What is the matter there? Signor, is all your family within? 
Are your doors locked? Why? Wherefore ask you this? Soon, sir, you are robbed. For shame. Put on your gown. Your heart is burst. You have lost half your soul. Even now, now, very now, an old black ram is tupping your white ewe. Arise, arise, awake the snorting citizens with the bell, or else the devil will make a grandsire of you. Arise, I say. What? Have you lost your wits? Most reverend signor, do you know my voice? Not I. What are you? My name is Rodrigo. The words are welcome. I have chosen thee not to haunt about my doors. In honest plainness, thou hast heard me say, my daughter is not for thee. And now, in madness, being full of supper and distempering draughts, upon Melissa's bravery, dost thou come to start my quiet. Sir, sir, sir. But thou must needs be sure. My spirit and my place have in them power to make this bitter to thee. Patience, good sir. What tells thou me of robbing? This is Venice. My house is not a grange. Most great Bimaccio, in simple and pure soul I come to you. Hazoon, sir, you are one of those that will not serve God if the devil bid you. Because we come to do you service and you think we are ruffians, you'll have your daughter covered with a Barbary horse. You'll have your nephews nay to you. You'll have coursers for cousins and genets for Germans. What profan wretch art thou? I am one, sir, that comes to tell you that your daughter and the moor are now making the beast with two backs. Thou art a villain. <laughs> you are a senator. This thou shalt answer. I know thee, Rodrigo. Sir, I will answer anything, but I beseech you, if it be your pleasure, the most wise consent, as partly I find it is, that your fair daughter, at this odd even and dull watch of the night, transported with no worse nor better a guard, but with a knave of common hire, a gondolier, to the gross claps of a vicious moor. If this be known to you, and your allowance, we have then done you bold and saucy wrongs. But if you know not this, my manners tell me we have your wrong rebuke. Do not believe that, from the sense of all civility, I would thus play and trifle with your reverence. Your daughter, if you have not given her leave, I say again, hath made a gross revolt, tying her duty, beauty, wits, and fortunes into an extravagant and wheeling stranger of here and everywhere. Straight satisfy yourself. If she be in her chamber or your house, let loose on me the justice of the state, for thus deluding you. Strike on the tinder hole. Give me a tapper. Call up all my people. This accident is not unlike my dream. Billy forfeit oppresses me already. Light, I say. Light! Exit from above. Farewell, for I must leave you. It seems not meet nor wholesome to my place to be produced. As if I stay, I shall, against the more, for I do know the state. However this may gall him with some check, cannot with safety cast him, for he's embarked with such loud reason to the Cyprus wars, which even now stand in act, that for their souls another of his fathom they have none to lead their business. In which regard, though I do hate him as I do hell pains, yet for necessity of present life I must show out a flag and sign of love, which is indeed but sign, that you shall surely find him lead to the Sagittary the raised search, and there will I be with him. So, farewell. Exit. Enter below Brabantio and servants with torches. It is too true and evil gone, see ease. And what is to come of my despised time is not but bitterness. Now, Roderigo, where didst thou see her? O oh, unhappy girl, with your more says thou, who would be a father? How didst thou know it was she? Oh, she deceives me past thought. What said she to you? Get more tappers, raise all my kindred. Are the married, thank you? Truly, I think they are. Oh, heaven, how got she out? O oh, treason of the blood. Fathers, from hence trust not your daughters' minds by what you see them act. Are there not charms by which the property of youth and maidhood may be abused? Have you not read, Rodrigo, of some such thing? Yes, sir, I have indeed. Call up my brother. Oh, would you had had her. Someone away, some man other. 
Do you know where we may apprehend her and the moor? I think I can discover him, if you please, to get good guard and go along with me. Pray you lead on. At every house I will call, I may command at most. Get open so, and raise some special officers of night. On, good Rodrigo, I will deserve your pains. Exeunt. Scene two. Venice, another street. Enter Othello, Iago, and attendants with torches. Though in the trade of war I have slain men, yet do I hold it very stuff in the conscience to do no contrived murder. I lack iniquity sometimes to do me service. Nine or ten times I had thought to have yurked him here, under the ribs. Tis better as it is. Nay, but he prated and spoke such scurvy and provoking terms against your honour that with the little goodliness I have I did full hard forbear him. But I pray you, sir, are you fast married? Be assured of this, that the Magnifico is much beloved, and hath in his effect a voice potential as double as the Duke's. He will divorce you, or put upon you what restraint and grievance the law, with all his might to enforce it on, will give him cable. Let him do his spite. My services, which I have done the seniory, shall outtongue his complaints. Tis yet to know, which, when I know that boasting is an honour I shall promulgate, I fetch my life and being from men of royal siege, and my demerits may speak unbonneted to as proud a fortune as this that I have reached. For no, Iago, but that I love the gentle Desdemona, I would not my unhoused free condition put into circumscription and confine for the sea's worth. But look, what lights come yond? Those are the raised father and his friends. You were best go in. Not I. I must be found. My parts, my title, and my perfect soul shall manifest me rightly. Is it they? By Janus, I think no. Enter Cassio and certain officers with torches. The servants of the duke and my lieutenant. The goodness of the night upon you, friends. What is the news? The duke does greet you, general, and he requires your haste post-haste appearance even on the instant. What is the matter, think you? Something from Cyprus, as I may divine. It is a business of some heat. The galleys have sent a dozen sequent messengers this very night at one another's heels, and many of the consuls, raised and met, are at the duke's already. You have been hotly called for when, being not at your lodging to be found, the Senate hath sent about three several quests to search you out. Tis well I am found by you. I will but spend a word here in the house, and go with you. Exit. Ancient, what makes he here? Faith, he hath to-night boarded a land, Carrick. If it prove lawful prize, he's made for ever. I do not understand. He's married. To who? Re-enter Othello. Married. Uh, come, Captain, will you go? Have with you. Here comes another troop to seek for you. It is Brabantio. General, be advised, he comes to bad intent. Enter Brabantio, Roderigo, and officers with torches and weapons. Hola, stand there. Signor, it's the Lord. Down with him, Tiff. They draw on both sides. You, Roderigo, come, sir, I am for you. Keep up your bright swords, for the dew will rust them. Good Signor, you shall more command with years than with your weapons. O oh, thou foul thief, where hast thou stout, my daughter? Damned as thou art, thou hast enchanted her, for I will refer me to all things of sense, if she in chains of magic were not bound. What are a maid so tender, fair, and happy, so was it to marriage that she shunned the worldly called darlings of our nation, would ever have to incur a general mock, run from her goddess to the sooty bosom of such a thing as thou? To fear, not to delight. Just made a wall, if it is not gross in sense that thou hast practised on her with foul charms, abused her delicate youth with drugs or minerals that we cannot motion. I'll have it disputed on. It is probable and palpable to thinking. I therefore apprehend and do add a D for an abuser of the world, a practiser of arts inhibited and out of warrant. Lay hold upon him. If he do resist, subdue him at his peril. Hold your hands, both you of my inclining and the rest. Were it my cue to fight, I should have known it without a prompter. Where will you that I go to answer this your charge? To prison. 
till fit time of law and course of direct session call thee to answer what if i do obey how may the duke be therewith satisfied whose messengers are here about my side upon some present business of the state to bring me to him tis true most worthy signor the duke's in council and your noble self i am sure is sent for how the duke in council in this time of the night bring him away mine is not an idle cause the duke himself or any of my brothers of the state cannot but feel this wrong as it were their own for if such actions may have passes free born slaves and pagans shall our statesmen be exeunt scene three venice a council chamber the duke and senators sitting at a table officers attending there is no composition in these news that gives them credit indeed they are disproportioned my letters say a hundred and seven galleys and mine a hundred and forty and mine two hundred but though they jump not on a just account as in these cases where the aim reports tis oft with difference yet do they all confirm a turkish fleet and bearing up to cyprus nay it is possible enough to judgment i do not so secure me in the error but the main article i do approve in fearful sense within what ho what ho what ho a messenger from the galleys enter a sailor now what's the business the turkish preparation makes for roads so was i bid report here to the state by senior angelo how say you by this change this cannot be by no assay of reason tis a pageant to keep us in false gaze when we consider the importancy of cyprus to the turk and let ourselves again but understand that as it more concerns the turk than rhodes so may he with more facile question bear it for that it stands not in such warlike brace but altogether lacks the abilities that rhodes is dressed in if we make thought of this we must not think the turk is so unskilful to leave that latest which concerns him first neglecting an attempt of ease and gain to wake and wage a danger profitless nay in all confidence he's not for roads here is more news enter a messenger the otomites reverend and gracious steering a due course towards the isle of rhodes have there enjointed them with an after fleet ay so i thought how many as you guess o oh, thirty sail and now they do restem their backward course bearing with frank appearance their purposes towards cyprus signor montagno your trusty and most valiant servitor with his free duty recommends you thus and prays you to believe him tis certain then for cyprus marcus lucicus is not he in town he's now in florence write for us to him post post haste dispatch here comes brabantio and the valiant moor enter brabantio othello iago roderigo and officers valiant othello we must straight employ you against the general enemy ottoman to brabantio i did not see you welcome gentle signor we lacked your counsel and your help to-night so did i yours good your grace pardon me neither by place nor aught i heard of business had raised me from my bed nor doth the general care take hold on me for my particular grief is of so floodgate and overbearing nature that it anglets and swallows other sorrows and it is steel itself why what's the matter my daughter oh my daughter dead ay to me this abuse is stolen from me and corrupted by spells and medicines bought of mountebanks for nature so preposterously to err being not deficient blind or lame of sense since witchcraft could not whoever he be that in this foul proceeding hath thus beguiled your daughter of herself and you of her the bloody book of law you shall yourself read in the bitter letter after your own sense yea though our proper son stood in your action humbly i thank your grace here's the man this more whom now it seems your special mandate for the state affairs had hither brought we are very sorry for it to othello what in your own part can you say to this nothing but this is so 
most potent grave and reverend seniors my very noble and approved good masters that i have ta'en away this old man's daughter it is most true true i have married her the very head and front of my offending hath this extent no more rude am i in my speech and little blessed with the soft phrase of peace for since these arms of mine had seven years pith till now some nine moons wasted they have used their dearest action in the tented field and little of this great world can i speak more than pertains to feats of broil and battle and therefore little shall i grace my cause in speaking for myself yet by your gracious patience i will a round unvarnished tale deliver of my whole course of love what drugs what charms what conjuration and what mighty magic for such proceeding i am charged withal i won his daughter a maiden never bold of spirit so still and quiet that her motion blustered herself and see in spite of nature of yours of country credit everything to fall in love with what she feared to look on it is judgment maimed and most imperfect that will confess perfection so good air against all rules of nature and must be driven to find the practices of cunning hell why this should be i therefore vouch again that with some mixtures powerful over the blood or with some dram conjured to this effect he wrought upon her to vouch this is no proof without more wider and more over test than these thin habits and poor likelihoods of modern seeming do prefer against him but othello speak did you by indirect or forced courses subdue and poison this young maid's affections or came it by request and such fair question as soul to soul affordeth i do beseech you send for the lady to the sagittary and let her speak of me before her father if you do find me foul in her report the trust the office i do hold of you not only take away but let your sentence even fall upon my life fetch desdemona hither ancient conduct them you best know the place exeunt iago and attendants and till she come as truly as to heaven i do confess the vices of my blood so justly to your grave ears i'll present how i did thrive in this fair lady's love and she in mine say it othello her father loved me oft invited me still questioned me the story of my life from year to year the battles sieges fortunes that i have passed i ran it through even from my boyish days to the very moment that he bade me tell it wherein i spake of most disastrous chances of moving accidents by flood and field of hairbreadth scapes in the imminent deadly breach of being taken by the insolent foe and sold to slavery of my redemption thence and portents in my travels history wherein of antars vast and deserts idle rough quarries rocks and hills whose heads touch heaven it was my hint to speak such was the process and of the cannibals that each other eat the anthropophagi and men whose heads do grow beneath their shoulders this to hear would desdemona seriously incline but still the house affairs would draw her thence which ever as she could with haste dispatch she'd come again and with a greedy ear devour up my discourse which i observing took once a pliant hour and found good means to draw from her a prayer of earnest heart that i would all my pilgrimage dilate whereof by parcels she had something heard but not intentively i did consent and often did beguile her of her tears when i did speak of some distressful stroke that my youth suffered my story being done she gave me for my pains a world of sighs she swore in faith twas strange twas passing strange twas pitiful twas wondrous pitiful she wished she had not heard it yet she wished that heaven had made her such a man she thanked me and bade me if i had a friend that loved her i should but teach him how to tell my story and that would woo her upon this hint i spake she loved me for the dangers i had passed and i loved her that she did pity them 
This only is the witchcraft I have used. Here comes the lady, let her witness it. Enter Desdemona, Iago, and attendants. I think this tale would win my daughter too. Good Brabantio, take up this mangled matter at the best. Men do their broken weapons rather use than their bare hands. I pray you, hear her speak. If she confess that she was half the war, destruction on my head, if my bed blame light on the man. Come hither, gentle mistress, do perceive in all this noble company where most you owe obedience. My noble father, I do perceive here a divided duty. To you I am bound for life and education. My life and education both do learn me how to respect you. You are the lord of duty. I am hitherto your daughter. But here is my husband, and so much duty as my mother showed to you, preferring you before her father, so much I challenge that I may profess do to the more, my lord. God be with you. I have done. Please it, your grace, unto the state affairs. I had rather to adopt the child than get it. Come hither, more. I here do give thee that with all my heart, which but thou hast already, with all my heart I would keep from thee. For your sake, Jewel, I am glad at soul I have no other child, for thy escape would teach me tyranny. To hang clocks on them, I have done, my lord. Let me speak like yourself, and lay a sentence, which, as a grease or step, may help these lovers into your favour. When remedies are past, the griefs are ended, by seeing the worst, which late on hopes depended. To mourn a mischief that is past and gone, is the next way to draw new mischief on. What cannot be preserved when fortune takes, patient her injury and mockery makes. The rob that smiles steals something from the thief, he robs himself that spends a bootless grief. So let the Turk of Cyprus us beguile. We'll lose it not so long as we can smile. He bears the sentence well that nothing bears, but the free comport which from thence he hears. But he bears both the sentence and the sorrow, that to pay grief must of poor patience borrow. These sentences to sugar or to gall, being strong on both sides, I equivocal. But words are words. I never yet did hear that the bruised heart was pierced through the ear. I humbly beseech you, proceed to the affairs of state. The Turk, with the most mighty preparation, makes for Cyprus. Othello, the fortitude of the place is best known to you, and though we have there a substitute of most allowed sufficiency, yet opinion, a sovereign mistress of effects, throws a more safer voice on you. You must therefore be content to slobber the gloss of your new fortunes with this more stubborn and boisterous expedition. The tyrant custom, most grave senators, hath made the flinty and steel couch of war my thrice-driven bed of down. I do agonize a natural and prompt alacrity I find in hardness and do undertake these present wars against the Ottomites. Most humbly, therefore, bending to your state, I crave fit disposition for my wife, due reference of place and exhibition, with such accommodation and besort as levels with her breeding. If you please, be to her father's. I will not have it so. Nor I. Nor I. I would not dare recite to put my father in impatient thoughts by being in his eye. Most gracious Duke, to my unfolding lend your prosperous ear, and let me find a charter in your voice to assist my simpleness. What would you, Desdemona? That I did love the more to live with him. My downright violence and storm of fortunes may trumpet to the world, my heart subdued even to the very quality of my lord. I saw Othello's visage in his mind, and to his honours and his valiant parts did I my soul and fortunes consecrate. So that, dear lords, if I be left behind, a moth of peace, and he go to the war, 
the rights for which i love him are bereft me and i a heavy interim shall support by his dear absence let me go with him let her have your voices vouch with me heaven i therefore beg it not to please the palate of my appetite nor to comply with heat the young affects in me defunct and proper satisfaction but to be free and bounteous to her mind and heaven defend your good souls that you think i will your serious and great business scant for she is with me no when light-winged toys of feathered cupid seal with wanton dullness my speculative and office instruments that my disports corrupt and taint my business let housewives make a skillet of my helm and all in dine and base adversities make head against my estimation be it as you shall privately determine either for his stay or going the affair cries haste and speed must answer it you must away to-night with all my heart at nine in the morning here we'll meet again othello leave some officer behind and he shall our commission bring to you with such things else of quality and respect as doth import you so please your grace my ancient a man he is of honesty and trust to his conveyance i assign my wife with what else needful your good grace shall think to be sent after me let it be so good night to every one to brabantio and noble signor if virtue no delighted beauty lack your son-in-law is far more fair than black i do brave more use desdemona well look to her more if thou hast eyes to see she has deceived her father and matey exeunt duke senators officers etc my life upon her faith honest iago my desdemona must i leave to thee i prithee let thy wife attend on her and bring them after in the best advantage come desdemona i have but an hour of love of worldly matters and direction to spend with thee we must obey the time exeunt othello and desdemona iago what sayest thou noble heart what will i do thinkest thou why go to bed and sleep i will incontinently drown myself if thou dost i shall never love thee after why thou silly gentleman it is silliness to live when to live is torment and then we have a prescription to die when our death is our physician oh villainous i have looked upon the world for four times seven years and since i could distinguish betwixt a benefit and an injury i never found man that knew how to love himself ere i would say i would drown myself for the love of a guinea hen i would change my humanity with a baboon what should i do i confess it is my shame to be so fond but it is not in my virtue to amend it virtue a fig tis in ourselves that we are thus or thus our bodies are gardens to which our wills are gardeners so that if we plant nettles or sow lettuce set hyssop or weed up thyme supply it with one gender of herbs or distract it with many either to have it sterile with idleness or manured with industry why the power and corrigible authority of this lies in our wills if the balance of our lives had not one scale of reason to poise another of sensuality the blood and baseness of our natures would conduct us to most preposterous conclusions but we have reason to cool our raging emotions our carnal stings our unbitted lusts whereof i take this that you call love to be a sect or scion it cannot be it is merely a lust of the blood and a permission of the will come be a man drown thyself drown cats and blind puppies i have professed me thy friend and i confess me knit to thy deserving with cables of perdurable toughness i could never better stead thee than now put money in thy purse follow thou the wars defeat thy favour with an usurped beard i say put money in thy purse it cannot be that desdemona should long continue her love to the moor put money in thy purse nor he his to her it was a violent commencement and thou shalt see an unanswerable sequestration 
put but money in thy purse these moors are changeable in their wills fill thy purse with money the food that to him now is as luscious as locusts shall be to him shortly as acerb as the colloquintida she must change for youth when she is sated with his body she will find the error of her choice she must have change she must and therefore put money in thy purse if thou wilt needs damn thyself do it a more delicate way than drowning make all the money thou canst if sanctimony and a frail vow betwixt an erring barbarian and a super subtle venetian be not too hard for my wits and all the tribe of hell thou shalt enjoy her therefore make money a pox of drowning thyself it is clean out of the way seek thou rather to be hanged encompassing thy joy than to be drowned and go without her wilt thou be fast to my hopes if i depend on the issue thou art sure of me go make money i have told thee often and i retell thee again and again i hate the more my cause is hearted thine hath no less reason let us be conjunctive in our revenge against him if thou canst cuckold him thou dost thyself a pleasure be a sport there are many events in the womb of time which will be delivered traverse go provide thy money we will have more of this to-morrow adieu where shall we meet in the morning at my lodging i'll be with thee betimes go to farewell do you hear roderigo what say you no more of drowning do you hear i am changed i'll go sell all my land exit thus do i ever make my fool my purse for i my own gained knowledge should profane if i would time expend with such a snipe but for my sport and profit i hate the more and it is thought abroad that twixt my sheets he has done my office i know not if it be true but i for mere suspicion in that kind will do as if for surety he holds me well the better shall my purpose work on him cassio's a proper man let me see now to get his place and to plume up my will in double knavery how how let's see after some time to abuse othello's ear that he is too familiar with his wife he hath a person and a smooth disposed to be suspected framed to make women false the more is of a free and open nature that thinks men honest that but seem to be so and will as tenderly be led by the nose as asses are i have to it is engendered hell and night must bring this monstrous birth to the world's light exit end of act one